come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, welcome back, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast where a movie is chosen round robin every Saturday night. We watch it, we talk about it for your edification and listening pleasure. Uh, hey, real quick, ask that you do us a favor and head on over to wherever you found us and give us a like, a star rating, or write us a review because all of that stuff helps us get found by other folks like you. Sure does, Colin. That's right. <laughs> uh, so who are these internet radio superstars you're going to be hearing from tonight? Holly, Michaela. And I'm Colin. And we also want to announce that uh, this is uh, the... the so we're going to do a viewer's choice spectacular in January where you pick the movies that we're going to watch. We're going to go with the highest four vote getters mm -hmm. of a list of movies that are right now on our Facebook page. And I think we're going to have a link to it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go there and vote for you guys submitted movies or, you know, so it's now go you. and yep. vote for the ones. I think probably the first week is going to be like an elimination round. Probably, right? we got to whittle yeah. it down. Yeah, and then uh, everyone we'll, submitted three. You guys, three. You guys yeah. are so awesome. We have so many suggestions. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it's an embarrassment of riches. So thank you very much. <laughs> I'm excited to see some of these. So we'll have to see what. Yeah, uh, what we had a lot of fun off. with it last time, and I think this time is going to be really mm -hmm. awesome too. Yeah. So I mean, that is yeah. what we're doing. Like we are just going with the top four go vote getters mm -hmm. eventually. So I mean, I assume this first round we're going to have to whittle, and then we'll yeah. probably do another round next week, which will be the final uh, final whittling. Yes. Yep. Uh, so head on over. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can get us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. And you can follow us on Instagram. I'll post the link there, even though you won't be able to click on it because mm -hmm. it's Instagram, but it's Instagram. Uh, sorry, Saturday Night Freak Show on Instagram. That's right. Um, so tonight's movie was chosen by... Michaela. <laughs> what did you make us watch tonight? <laughs> <laughs> we watched Bad Moon. From the year... 1996. And directed by... Eric Redd. Who we would know from... Near Dark and The Hitcher. Oh. He wrote both of those movies, which I it's very evident now after seeing like... No, not that you say it's that. Like, he's got a yeah. pattern. Like His he stories does. have a very distinct flow, I think. I yeah. think so. Yeah. They have like a, they start real strong. They slow down and really spend time with the characters. Like he's all about like yeah. seeing characters in everyday situations. Think about all those times in Near Dark where they weren't doing anything. Yeah, you yeah. yeah you just hang, and then just hang out. Yeah, really. and then the action comes for a little bit, and then more character time. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's his thing. Well, Eric Red's a kind of an interesting cat. He's got a storied history. He also not too long after doing uh, Near Dark because he wrote those two. Mm -hmm. But he wrote and directed a movie that has a lot of critical acclaim called Cohen and Tate, which has Roy Scheider in it. I didn't see it, but I think it's like two mob guys in a car. That two sounds mob cool. Guys he in might a car. have a body in the trunk. I'm not sure. I didn't see it. He like probably said. has a body in the trunk. Mm -hmm. uh, he also wrote and directed a movie that's highly regarded in horror circles called Body Parts. Oh, I've seen this with I Jeff yes. Never yeah. seen it. It's not too bad. Yeah. I mean, again, it starts strong. Yeah, that's yeah. Eric <laughs> thing, man. Uh, but then sometime in, I believe, the 2000s, uh, there was an incident where Eric Red uh, drove his pickup truck into a restaurant where diners were dining, killed two people. He got out of the car, tried to kill himself with, <gasps> like, what? right there, was arrested. Somehow didn't do any time for this. I think there were civil lawsuits. I don't know how he got off. What? Yeah. The Ever -living didn't Matthew fuck. Broderick get off killing people in a car accident in Ireland? He killed like three people. And everyone seems to forget about that. Yeah. He did. Yeah. But, <laughs> but that was like a car accident kind of scenario. Yeah. Like it was not intentional. This is intentional, apparently. Well, I don't know if it was intentional. I don't know if he was suicidal when he did this. I, mean, I don't know if it was an like accident. It. He just knew like right away. It's like, fuck this. I'm going to kill myself. I don't know. If no, he was that's crazy. No, I, I, I cannot imagine that someone runs into a diner and their instant reaction is like, well, better kill myself. Yeah. I don't think that would even cross their mind. I think they'd just be in pure panic. Yeah. But I mean, but, I don't know, but but it just—it's weird. That definitely, some sort of mental break for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. But the only reason that I mentioned that is because then he did a movie called A Hundred Feet, where Famke Jansen has is—I can't remember what she did, but she has an ankle bracelet. And she can't go within a hundred feet of her house. 
and the ghost of her ex-husband, who's a bad guy, it's Michael Pere. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> is stalking her in her house, and she can't like leave the house. Have you seen this movie? I have not. Because I kind of want to now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Now that you know, because I'm like, well, what's it called? Because he must have been on house arrest. It's a uh, 100 feet. 100 feet. Okay. Yeah. I kind of want to watch this. By written and directed by Eric Red. Eric Red. Michael yeah. Pare's got to be on the wall by now, right? He's been in so many things. You know, I was actually thinking. Of, <laughs> uh, yeah. So actually, he is. He is. Not, he's working on his second appearance because he was in Streets of Fire. Streets of Fire. That's right. He was in Moon 44. For, and then he was in Village of the Damned. Yep. Right. That's, that's yeah. And now he's in Bad Moon. Oh, mm-hmm. sorry. The Hall of Fame, for those of you who, who haven't been following yeah. the show, basically, if we find an act, if an mi- actor is in a movie three times on this show, right. mm-hmm. we're putting him up on the wall. Mm-hmm. That's right. The Wall the of Fame. S- the, the Sylvester Stallone Wall of Fame, if you will. Basically. <laughs> yeah, Since that man has more appearances probably than anyone. Do we ever total up? What is he, like six? He's got to be like six or seven. Right, we got to go back. And- yeah. Yep. some point listeners so, do it for us yeah. <laughs> there you go uh okay so bad moon uh 1996 mm-hmm. this is a morgan creek uh production mm-hmm. uh that no one except for like werewolf movie fans have ever heard of no one's ever heard of this movie how come absolutely no one i don't know because even when it came out it did horribly like it would never had a moment of success i don't remember like, a lot of promotion for this yeah. I'm, like i didn't even know i think I became aware of it because it's got a very cool looking uh, cover poster image. Mm-hmm. Uh, I became aware of it when it was out on like video store shelves. Mm-hmm. Like I don't do not remember the yeah. theatrical release for this movie at all. And I'm mm-hmm. into this kind of stuff. Yes, you right. are. And would have you gone. are you right. are the audience for this movie. <laughs> yeah. Um. But realistically, how popular are Eric Red movies? I mean, Near Dark did pretty well. Yeah, the Hitcher did well. I mean. It- I don't know if they are like huge box office success. They're yeah. like cult, you know, right. they're known well, that's, of by that's the, the whole right. cult following. Usually yeah. um, 99% of the time comes later. It's yeah. not an initial thing. I feel like the so. Hitcher was financially successful at its time though. So. Like it was mm-hmm. pretty, pretty well. It was a hit. Yeah. yeah. It was a it was hit. Like a sleeper yeah. Hit, you know, mm-hmm. one of those. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because that was what really pushed C. Thomas Howell to the forefront was that movie. Right. So, there was in Soul Man right before. No. Soul Man. Oh, right. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listeners, Which has if a you're horror. not familiar, Google Soul Man yeah. and figure it out for yourself. Oh, man. <laughs> that man. that yeah. movie is an enigma. <laughs> yeah. I know. Maybe someday it'll make it here. <laughs> I mean, that would it be, might. Fun. That it, would it's be pretty fun right. to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, why... Uh, you know, I mean, like, uh, how how did this movie like end up on the on the radar? I guess uh, I collect werewolf movies. <laughs> and I, You're a and werewolf yes, fan. I love them. I love them. I think this is the third one I brought. I to was going to say. I think that yeah. was evident during Dog Soldiers. Dog Soldiers, and I brought Curse too. You did. So. Dog Soldiers was first, um, though, right? All right, Michaela. Here we go. Hot top five werewolf. No, I was actually going to say you. We've had this discussion off mic because I, 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 I don't want to say famously, but I don't like the howling. Like that's not a movie. I, I, it's not, I don't enjoy it as a werewolf movie. And you challenged me to name ten werewolf movies that were better than the howling, and it was a real stretch to try and come up with ten. Just I don't like the howling. Well, okay. Well, here's the, the question. The pool is shallow, but it's rich. It, yes. <laughs> so should we do a hot five, top five uh, werewolf movies or movie werewolves? Um. Ooh. I mean, for I'm me, a, a lot of times they're one and the same for the most part. Okay. Like, I think, mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about a Dark Soldiers one. I think that's mm-hmm. one of the best werewolf movies. And I think it's the single best werewolf design, too. Okay. So. The werewolf design okay. in Dog Soldiers is kind of like a naked human mm-hmm. with, uh, they're kind of painted brown and mm-hmm. maybe a little bit of hair. Mm-hmm. And then they have this kind of upper body and full head mm-hmm. werewolf animatronic. But they're sure. really tall and gangly and yep. like long yeah. fingers, like really long, like digits and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, they're, they're really, they tower over the, every every person in that movie. Yeah. I always think about that scene when he's laying in the bed and he's towering over him. So you like bipedal werewolf. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I found it interesting, not to jump ahead a whole bunch of this movie, but like when Michael Pare transforms that he turns into a wolf man and then a werewolf. Did you mm. guys think that was weird that he like yeah. turns into like a Lon Chaney wolf man first mm-hmm. and yeah. then goes to full on like yeah. muzzled werewolf later? Mm-hmm. That's it's like a thriller just kept going. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, what's your what? Well, who should we start with? We got to do this. Okay. What's, we- your, what's your best were- movie werewolves? Um, I mean, Dog Soldiers, American Werewolf in London, obviously. Yeah, the Hell Beast. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, this one, this movie's up there. I really like the design in this one a lot. It doesn't move as well as it should, but it's still pretty good. I, but that's more, see, but that mm-hmm. comes down to the question of, is it design or is it the, you know, director, photography, uh, you know, the, the, the way it's mm-hmm. shot, the way it's performed. I think this movie had a lot of full body shots, which yeah. I thought was daring. You know, yeah, like yeah. it ends up looking like a guy in a costume. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how good the sculpt is, mm-hmm. which I think this is probably one of, you know, the, maybe one of the best movie werewolf, you mm-hmm. know, designs. I mean, personally, I, so. I like, I yeah. think maybe of the bipedal nature. Mm-hmm. I do like, uh, in the, I think it's the second underworld movie. Like the lead lichen. It was the gray one. Yeah. That one I thought was a, that is a good one. Yeah. I forgot about that. That is a good one. Looking, yeah. And I it, like that one a lot. Because they don't show it moving enough mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. just what you get from the glances of it. You know, I think it's basically there at the end, but some of that may be CG too. I don't know, but that's mm-hmm. a pretty good one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's Wolfman. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like the Wolfman 2010. And mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I was going to say, that's that's definitely my top five. Mm-hmm. I like the Wolfman. Yeah. And yeah. I kind of dig the uh, Oliver Reed Wolfman from uh, Curse of the Werewolf. Because mm-hmm. uh-huh. he actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the Wolfman 2010 uses a lot of that imagery. It does. You know, of the shirt yes. that's open and he's got like the furry chest and, you know, the. It's kind of that classic werewolf yeah. image. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think they're. The wolves are pretty well designed in The Howling. I more have problems with the narrative of that movie. Not so much the design. I agree. The design's fine. I just, the yeah. story is not what yeah, I want. Yeah, I do like I the werewolf, the werewolves mm-hmm. in The Howling. Yeah. Rob Bottin's. Because I think that was the first bipedal werewolves. It, it might movie. be. Yeah. Uh, th- I think this movie, Bad Moon, might be one of the only werewolf movies where you only see, like, one werewolf at a time, right? Like we like basically Michael Parr is pretty much there's the werewolf at the very in the cold open, but other than that, he's the only one in this movie. Yeah, but there, I there think, aren't other ones that like like the Howling. There was a bunch of them. Dog yeah. Soldiers. There's a bunch of them. But the long tradition of movie werewolves right. going back to Werewolf of London or mm-hmm. She Wolf of London. I can't remember if she actually transforms. I think so. But then you got like movies like The Boy Who Cried Werewolf. And the entire run of uh, Paul Nashi movies mm-hmm. where he played Valdemar Daninsky, the cursed Spanish nobleman who, uh, you know, always mm-hmm. turned it in. Basically, he looked like the wolf man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they were always guys with furry faces and fangs and a snout mm-hmm. wandering around, you know, foggy woods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Until I think Joe Dante or Rob Bottin basically mm-hmm. designed the howling bipedal werewolves. And then I think he got into more like, you know, when you have Jack Nicholson and Wolf, he has to fight another werewolf. When you yep. get to the 2010 Wolfman, there's two werewolves. You yeah. know, it's like, it can't just be that idea of a guy versus his own nature. Kind right. Of thing. It's a monster movie trope. Lake Placid does it. Anaconda does it. Every monster movie yes. does it. The twist at the end is always, there's two of them? Yeah. That's what it always is. Dare we say the Meg? Yeah, the Meg. <laughs> <laughs> the Meg is a monster movie trope. So I'm glad yeah. that this movie didn't fall into that trap of like... Oh, surprise. There's another one. Yeah. No, it was just Michael Parry the whole time. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Just him. So Eric Red has a classic kind of, uh, well, this is based on a novel. Yes. And I, I've read it. It's great. Did you? I, yes. I love this book. I actually, okay. I actually Good. think the. I mean, the book is a lot better than the movie, but that's what I hear. It's a lot oh, what's better. the book called? Oh, uh, the book's called Thor. Who's by? Uh, Wayne Smith. Okay. Yep. And it was written in like 91 or 92. So okay. not long before they made this movie. Okay. Um, and it's the, the movie or the book is actually pretty deep compared to the movie. Um, the book is told entirely from Thor the dog's perspective for the most part. He's a German shepherd. Mm-hmm. And in the book, they like, like there's more kids and like the family's a little bit bigger, but it's not important. Um, but Thor is going through all these like complicated emotions of like the family accepts this guy when he's in human form, but when he's a dog, they don't accept him. And what does that say about my place in the pack? And should I, should I protect them? Or like, is this a friend? And like, he's really confused. Or is going it the so alpha, right? Yeah. The, the, yeah. Book, the book is from a dog's perspective. Yeah. It's great. It's, and like, he just, he is like, like I said, it's really pretty deep for being a yeah. book from a dog's perspective. But yeah, he's really confused about like how this character fits into the pack and like what it means for his role in the pack. It's really interesting. And this movie doesn't touch on any of those like subtleties. Like, yeah, it's too bad. I mean, that I don't is, know how that you is do a it, really but... bold thing to do in a book. Uh huh. Like, yeah. Well, that's the cool idea. Yeah. yeah. That's what really gets the bold. book noticed, I suppose. It's mm-hmm. like we're gonna. So what you need to make is like Benji, the Benji version. No, where that's, <laughs> that's when, we're, when we're watching this. I was thinking, I was like, you know, this is like 
Because I, I notoriously hate fucking dog movies and horse movies. I hate that bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, this is like fucking Beethoven for grownups. Yeah. Like, that's kind yeah. of what this is. Mm-hmm. It, it works. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's really bizarre. I, I can't figure out how else to explain it. Because it's even got like that, that, that like John Williams y score that we talked oh, about earlier. Yeah. It's, it's very. Kind of Spielbergy. It's got that like family kid friendly feel in in parts of it. When they were doing the flyover shots of the woods, I was like, they're yeah. gonna kick in the Jurassic Park theme song like any yeah. minute now. Like it felt like it was going that way for real. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the kid that, like doing his ET scene of riding the bike to yeah. go save his dog. Fucking yeah. Dennis the Menace on his red bike. I was <laughs> yeah. like, this is like it is Dennis the Menace. Yeah, it is Dennis Mason the Menace. Gamble yeah. in the nineties. What's his name? Mason Gamble. Yeah. Mason Gamble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, Walter Matthau. <laughs> yeah. He looks, exactly, yeah. he looks exactly like that in this movie. He looks exactly the same. I think that yeah. was probably yeah. made around. I was like, yeah. it's gotta be like, like a, yeah. he's gotta be like a year older in this. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. He's such a cute kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else is in this movie? Mariel Hemingway. Who we would know from? Uh, Superman 4. Quest for Peace. <laughs> I know. I looked her up at IMDb. And, and I, was like, I was like, that's it. <laughs> well, and, and Woody Manhattan, Allen's. Yeah, yeah Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. Was, and that's all the, I could uh, come up with. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it. Like, I mean, she's obviously done a bunch of other stuff in TV right. shows, but like what people would remember her for. There's like, her cheekbones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And her last that's name. what you remember her for. <laughs> yeah. She's the great granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway. Yes, indeed. Out. Her yeah. and her sister, Margot Hemingway. Mm-hmm. I believe it was in a movie called Lipstick where she was attacked by. Uh, Chris Sarandon. Ah, no, oh, wow. Trying to bring this around to playing horse, or werewolves six or degrees of separation. No. Sure, yeah. yeah, didn't work. Got no. to vampires with Fright Night. It's all right. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. You tried. A werewolf movie. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so the the so this basically this is a three. Well, okay. There's like seven Thor. people in this whole movie. That, yeah. Did you notice how short movie. the cast list was? Yeah. It was. Yeah, yeah, it's really short. But it all takes place in a. Well, okay. It starts off the in, cold open. Yeah. Yeah, the cold open. Rainforests of the Amazon mm-hmm. tropics. Mm-hmm. Was it the Amazon? I think he said that it was the Amazon. The oh, IMDb the guy- says Nepal, which, but that say, does all, not look like Nepal. All the guys that were sitting around the fire were like Nepalese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. Okay, I get the idea of like you know, I mean, what you always. I think it was Werewolf of London set up the idea that the dude went to. I think it was Nepal, mm-hmm. and he up in the caves or whatever he was. You know, exposed to the wolf's bane. Or is whatever. that like the origins of the lichen mythology? Maybe. No, I think it's like Eastern Europe. Yeah, that's what I thought. Feels European. That's what I Europe. thought. Yeah. Just I think, to, think it's just like right. name. Let's. What's an exotic place halfway around the world that you know you can start this off? You gotta have somewhere that has wolves. Yeah. This is like a tropical rainforest that we're looking at at the beginning of this movie. Yeah, like, which makes no sense. Yeah, there it makes wolves. no sense. This, no, but there's, whatever. There's no wolves. Yeah. Uh, Michael Pere is a like, some sort scientist? of scientist, anthropology, Research something scientist, something like where a, he travels. Because remember, doesn't he tell like his girlfriend slash assistant whatever? He's like, and then next month we're going here, and then next month we're going there. Yeah, and, like, and in his uh, trailer, he's got like a microscope with tubes, and he's got mm-hmm. like splayed out lizards. And yeah, stuff, I got so. the idea he was like a doctor without borders kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Or was he just researching like diseases and stuff in the it's rainforest of Nepal. Put whatever you want on him, sure. You okay. know. Well, at the beginning of this movie, and there is two different versions of this film, which there are two key sequences, I guess, that are different between the unrated NC-17 director's cut and the R-rated version, which I believe is the one that we watched. I think so. I think so. Uh, there's a graphic. I remember in the the our the unrated version a mm-hmm. graphic sex scene that starts off the movie basically i mean within like a minute or two mm-hmm. between michael prey and his girlfriend and that is interrupted by a graphic um uh werewolf attack in their little tent mm-hmm. uh that was much shorter in this mm-hmm. version but right. he gets bitten or clawed or something by the ferocious beastie mm-hmm. and yeah. she gets completely maimed mm-hmm. and then cut to Six months later, whatever mm-hmm. the hell it is, yeah, Pan- present aerial day. over the forest, yeah, that, yeah, that Cue Spielbergian John soundtrack, uh, soundtrack, <laughs> yeah, on the yeah score. So our domestic sit- setup is Mario Hemingway plays a lawyer. We know this because she treats a guy by throwing her business card in his face, saying, "I'm a lawyer." <laughs> That's all you need to know about it. It's not important. It's really not an important scene. <laughs> no, don't no. mess with a lawyer on her own turf. Yeah, yeah. We're- Actual line of this movie. Actual line. 
It could have been so much better. I love it when characters have to tell you what they do to define like what they are. In a really literal sense like that. <laughs> it doesn't have any bearing at all on anything that transpires no. in this Her entire movie. Her being a lawyer has nothing to do with the rest she of She never this works movie. in this whole movie. She's always home. She's home making cookies watching Oprah. Yeah. And baking pies. Yeah. Made a pie. Made muffins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God damn it. We're saying that you probably don't have time to do this if you're like working on a massive client list. I've known know. a few lawyers and none of them have time to make a fucking rhubarb pie. I'm yeah. sorry. They don't. She never leaves the house. Never. No, this is like a bottle movie. It takes place like in mostly one location. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm suspecting that the whole thing is actually a massive indoor set. I don't know. I mean, the house could be out outdoors, but uh, it's in the woods. It's very scenic. It's in like all these pine trees and all this. Yeah. And it's uh, very remote. And uh, Mariel Hemingway lives with her son, Dennis the Menace. Mm-hmm. Yep. Who's just a precocious little kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And their dog, Thor. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Michael Pere comes back into the States. Uncle Ted. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't come immediately to, this is uh, her uh, brother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't come immediately to the, the family home. He, like, sets up his little trailer, trailer. on the edge of Lake Placid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is. It is like this is where I was like the Canadian Board of Tourism should have gotten on board with this movie and like, you know, partnered up because like those shots of where he was like camping in his trailer was like, that looks awesome. I want to go there. I know. Yeah, it was gorgeous. <laughs> it was but absolutely gorgeous. In real life, you can't actually go and like put your trailer, just park your trailer no. there. I'm yeah, sure. no, you can't. Yeah. Uh, so he's living the the uh, whatever. He's at liberty basically mm-hmm. because we don't know where he makes his money either. No. No, it's all that sweet, sweet he, research money. I guess he's, he's a pulling. scientist. Don't they use grants for everything? Like, yeah, I don't, he's I don't a straight know up transient at this point, yeah. though. Like, yeah. we we theorized he was squatting in the trailer. Even it wasn't even his. Yeah. He couldn't so. figure out how he actually got the trailer there. Because there's no truck. He doesn't have a car. <laughs> There's it's no car trailer. shown ever. Yeah. 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 He, I mean, he has to have one because eventually he takes the trailer to his sister's house. Like, yeah. how did he do that? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, mm-hmm. I assume she went and picked him up. Maybe she has a trailer. Oh, maybe. Hitch. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Can't remember what kind of car she drives because she never leaves the house. It was like a, she had like an SUV. It was like there a, was like, okay. yeah, there was like, like a that, Jeep Cherokee or something. There was yeah. that knockoff, like the shining shot of her driving on the road. Oh, right. You know, at the yep. beginning when okay. she's going to visit him. Yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. You got me. So there yeah. you go. It's got a trailer hitch. Yeah. Yeah. She put, tows him back and sets Thank him Thank God we figured out the logic of that. You yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I still don't get it because he is parked in this nice yeah. little perfect. I mean, it's like an outcropping of uh, rock or, you know, moss and covered rock, which is where you would set a trailer. The most beautiful landscaping of any, of any yeah. m- maybe ever I've yeah. seen in a movie. Yeah. Like, How did they get it up The there? very yeah. edge of a lake in the middle of the mountains. Mm-hmm. Like, it's yeah. beautiful. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so anyway, there's, uh, there's several murders that apparently are now occurring stateside uh, where people are being ripped mm-hmm. open. You always have to have your one that sets up the threat so we can see how vicious this beast is, mm-hmm. where a guy is going around, I assume, for some kind of uh, logging company, measuring trees mm-hmm. in the middle of the night, because that's what you do. None of these guys knock off at five o'clock with everybody else. They stay up. Measuring like, by moonlight. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And he starts to hear <laughs> like you the, do. The, the animal <laughs> howl out there in mm-hmm. the in the in the, the blackness. Yeah. The foggy blackness. And then for some reason he looks up. What? I thought that was weird. He looked up because well, the drool it, the was drool dripping on his, down on his No, face. no, no. At the beginning when he was first, because he's like, oh. Meh, it's nothing. And he continues to measure right in his book. And there's another howl. And he looks around and then there's a big howl and he looks up mm. and I'm like, what? Is there a flying werewolf? What's happening? That would be cool. If only. That would be cool. This I mean, a, it kind of flies. It like jumps up in trees like, silently, apparently. Like a flying squirrel where it has like that would uh, be cool. th- those wings that it pulls out. It'd be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> just swoop down and scoop you up. <laughs> that's terrifying. You're right. Like, that's horrifying. Yeah, I know. I want to see that movie I was kind now. of thinking that it would have full-on wings. Like a Mothman situation? Yeah. 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 Well, don't the flying squirrels have the... They what am I thinking like of? They just have, like, the skin between yeah, them. The yeah, the membrain. Yeah. Oh, you want... Holly I wants get you. full-on. You want I want full-on full on wings. Yeah. yeah. You want, a werewolf like, and a pterodactyl Razor and Rudolph, right? Yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, but this the guy lion gets- that flies I want a fucking werewolf Pegasus. Is what I want. <laughs> it could. Guess still we happen. gotta write it, Allie. Yeah. I mean, I'll do it. <laughs> it's still young in the whole, you know, werewolf uh, movie genre. No, it's not. We're we're well into it, I think. But uh, so anyway, we see this guy get eviscerated, 
It's kind of gory. Right? Was it? Um, I can't remember. He gets drooled on. I feel like the goes, aftermath is more. Oh, oh it bites, oh, bites his, his helmet. Yeah, yeah through his bites helmet. Bites his helmet. Yeah. Blood squirts all over the Which place. I, I liked that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, so because of this, the police descend on this area, and Michael Pere is like, "I can't stay here because obviously they're gonna get on to something." Why? And why so, was he not immediately a suspect and like taken into custody? I think they were so convinced that it was an animal. But like they had his his like trailer was part of the crime scene. It was behind the crime scene tape, yeah. and they just let this guy walk. Yeah, shitty police department. Oh yeah, real shitty in Timberline. <laughs> yeah, which is what it's called. Mm-hmm. Then he moves to Forest Glen or something like that. I can't remember the sign sure. was on that. Yeah, something like that. Um. Okay, so he takes up residence with his sister, and this is when the actual plot of the movie kicks in. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, so here's the thing, I guess, that I have seen this movie several times before. Mm -hmm. I saw it, I think, like on its initial video release. I saw it again in its unrated version, and I saw it again tonight. And I think I misinterpreted this movie the past two times that I saw it. All right. Holly is a first-time viewer tonight, so you can either back me up on this or not. The first time I saw this... I went into it going like, okay, who are the characters that we identify with as audience? Who is our main protagonist? Mm -hmm. Who's the main protagonist in this movie? The main protagonist? The dog. Okay. so I I, I didn't go there. I got there. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I, I connected around, with I Thor did. immediately. I, yeah. I immediately went to the dog. He's yeah. actually okay. got a pretty expressive face for a dog. I feel like like this might be some of the best no, dog acting I've his, ever seen in a dude, movie. His eyes tell this fucking story. Yeah. yeah. His eyes. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Yeah, and that's something that's tricky. I don't understand how they got his eye line to be so perfect in every scene for whatever he needed to express. Like, every scene where he needed to be, like, staring down Michael Pare, he was looking right at the perfect angle when they cut to him. You know? like, they are absolutely absolutely holding a treat behind the camera yeah they're but like, absolutely but like we've that. watched a lot of movies with dog actors though and i think this one might be one of the best ones we've ever seen on so the i mean show. my cat does that if i hold something <laughs> yeah. he will look at it whatever mm-hmm. wherever i take it mm-hmm. he looks at it mm-hmm. do you know how many dogs were used in the making of this film yes there was a, at least three um there was one so there was primo who was a movie trained dog that did a lot of the like running and like the interacting with the people there was deca who was a like veteran movie dog that was had been at the point when they filmed this movie had been doing movies for 10 years so she was kind of older and couldn't do like the really active stuff so she would do like the over the shoulder shots and kind of the close ups and stuff and then for the actual physical scenes where like the dogs interacting and fighting with people and things they used um like military trained dogs and were for any, that and were any of them in K9 with Jim Belushi. <laughs> that I do not know. I did not go to each individual dog's IMDb page and browse I bet the they credits, were. but I bet at least um, one of them. But you can you can tell when they switch to the like police trained dogs. hundred yeah. percent you can tell. There was one scene where I was actually it kind of made me nervous, which that was at the beginning because this like con man shows up at the house. It's the only other character mm-hmm. really in the mm-hmm. movie. Yep. He shows up and he tries to get the dog to attack him so he can file an insurance claim. Then it turns out she's a lawyer. Boom. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a scene where the dog knocks him down on the ground. Mm Mm-hmm. And this snarling dog Mm -hmm. is like an inch away from this guy's face. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is one confident actor or he is scared shitless Mm -hmm. right now with this dog (laughs) snarling. At that point. Yeah, no, at that po- at that point I was actually wondering if he was the actual handler of the mm. dog. Yeah. I've seen that guy in other movies though. Yeah. So I know he's an actor mm-hmm. by trade, but And that uh, I think was one of the moments where they did use the police dog. You know, just like uh when Michael Parry gets bit in the third act, like that very much is like you ever seen those videos like the police dogs yeah, with yeah. the guys oh. wear the sleeves? Yeah. Yeah, that Michael Parry had a sleeve on like that and they oh, just okay. set yeah. the police dog at him. So Okay. Yeah. But like I th- I you know, when when you see movies with dogs and you try to spot when it's a different dog by like if they look different i feel like it was pretty seamless for the I most thought, part in yeah. this movie yeah it was it really like well done yeah, yeah i never thought it was a different dog yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. all right well i'm glad that you saw it with the dog as the mm. protagonist because yeah. i mean the first time i saw it i didn't know about the book mm-hmm. yeah why would you right you, you know didn't, didn't, it was just like this is a werewolf movie mm-hmm. and then it's like okay am i supposed to identify with her am i supposed to identify with the kid or am i supposed to identify with the guy who is turning into the werewolf 
only this time around. Stupid me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because I'd heard it's based on it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this like it's a dog movie. And then it was like, oh, it's a dog movie. The dog yeah. Thor is the main character He's the, of like, the movie. <laughs> this is the most loyal dog I've ever seen in my life. This dog has yeah. one thing, one primary directive, and like that is it. He like... He he lives to to protect this family. He's yeah. a nanny dog. You know, yeah, yeah. He actually he, goes and checks on them at night. Goes into each room. And he brought him his stuffed animal. <laughs> yeah, and that's so cute. That's so cute. That's what I loved. Is like you see like the gen- it be j- this like if you could write a human character as well as this dog is written in this movie, like that'd be such a great movie. Like yeah. the gentleness that he has with the kid when oh. he goes to check on him and brings him his stuffed animal versus like the viciousness when he turns on a dime. Like mm-hmm. it's dog's a good actor. The dog's a really good actor. Yeah. But I still feel there was something missing. Like, like either we needed to start off the movie, like, like after you see the Michael Parade cold open, then there needs to be, like, something where the dog, you know, like in Cujo or something, the dog goes off and has, like, you know, finds something, chases a rabbit, not, he gets the guy off the property, something without the humans. Mm-hmm. So you, you know, are like, I'm with the dog as a central character. And then he goes back and then gets introduced to the kid and, you know, this other stuff. But, like, I don't know. I was taking it like, you know, okay, here are the humans, and, yeah, they have a pet. But they had those dog POV camera shots, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? But that didn't, it, didn't work for you? It just feels like there's something missing in the... Maybe it's because of the camera angles, too, or often shooting the dog from, like, a human uh, uh, or above camera angle, and we're not down with the dog's mm-hmm. point of view like you are in, like, Homeward Bound or, right. you know, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? yeah. or Beethoven or something like that where, you know... It those those are the contemporaries of this movie. Yeah. Those are around the same time, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. So maybe it just, I don't know, I, I felt like maybe it wasn't strong enough in its ident- audience identification with the dog. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. like I said, especially in compared to, like, the book, like, this is, like, I can see why you might not necessarily immediately think the dog is the protagonist yeah. you just think the dog's like a major part of the story mm-hmm. not necessarily the protagonist yeah mm-hmm. but once you see it mm-hmm. as the dog is the primary protagonist it like it changed the entire dynamic in the movie mm-hmm. for me because mm-hmm. then i'm like oh this is like a uh you know alpha beta struggle mm-hmm. yeah. between thor mm-hmm. and this guy who's just moved in who is you know either the threat or the alpha in the pack mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. yeah yeah, because there's a whole bunch of stare downs. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess yeah. the first time there are, there are a like, lot of stare downs. Half of this. this movie is like cutting back and forth between Michael Parry staring at this dog. Like, is that's that, half of this is movie. Is that dramatically intense, is my question. Uh, not as it would be if they didn't use it so much. They use it too much. That's the thing. That's that yeah, scene where, like, or, okay, that scene, I'm going to say this, but you're going to be like, which one? Because it happened so much. <laughs> but the scene when, like, Thor is staring down Michael Parry in his trailer, and Michael Parry goes back inside and, like, stares out the window and then comes back and tries to sneak around him. That scene's way too long. Mm-hmm. It does not need to be that yeah. long. We get it, you know? We, yeah, because you're going, like, can't he, why, why can't he move? Like, yeah. what's going to happen if he moves? Right. Well, the dog going to do something? I don't know. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? You know, what's happening mm-hmm. here? The guy's just like, I'm not coming out because the dog's fucking staring at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the dogs, but, but at this point, we've seen that dog do that like three days in a row now. So we don't need to keep going back yeah, to like the dogs exactly. and I stare at him all the time. Like, yeah. Well, there's also the dog like pees on his, uh, his trailer, trailer yeah. which, which awesome. I thought was, you know, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm like, funny. oh, the dog's like marking his territory. Then I'm mm-hmm. like, well, Michael Prey at some point needs to, you know, when he came out and he's staring him down, I'm like, he's just going to pee over his, you know, where he peed on the trailer, but that never happens. Mm-mm. But at least that does pay off. That does pay off, and I liked that. Later in the movie. <laughs> that was funny. Michael Prey ends up peeing on Thor's, or in on Thor's the dog house. Dog house. Yes. Yeah. That was yep. funny. It was that great. Was pretty good. Which and I guess is solidifying that whole idea of like, this is what the movie's actually about. Yeah. And not only that, he did it after like Thor had been taken away to animal control. So yeah. like, that was like a final, just like finishing move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and I got you out of the house, and I'm going to piss on like, your shit, you know? Yeah. God, that scene when he got drug out of the house to go to animal control, so sad. Oh, I hate so that sad. Scene. I hated it so much. <laughs> well, that was the moment where I was like, all right, tell me what happens to the dog. Because I can't take it. <laughs> he had two people holding him and he was dragging them. Did you I notice know. that? That dog was dragging those two it people. It made me really sad because those things around his neck. Mm-hmm. Poor baby. Yeah, it's like the leash things yeah. or whatever that they use for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The like hook thing. Well, he yeah. gets taken away to animal control. Why? I mean, this is a power play, right? This right, is Michael yeah. Prey basically getting the dog. At some point, it's like, I got to get him yeah. out of the... He antagonizes the dog. Yes. He, like, gets all smarmy with him and, like, winks at him. And basically, like, it's... it's Yeah, it's like two alphas facing yeah. off, right? Mm-hmm. You know, And then so the dog bites him. 
And then uh, that's when they're like, oh, he's got a taste for blood. He's dangerous. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is why the fucking scene that I'm like, this scene's unnecessary. The scene with the fucking con man. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. Is relevant mm-hmm. to the script because yeah. you have to, the con man comes back to apparently with a fucking uh, hatchet knife. A butcher knife. Yeah. He's yeah. going to like attack and kill the fucking dog or something. It's like because, a meat cleaver. Yeah. Yeah. But the werewolf is there, and the werewolf uh, kills the guy, and apparently splatters him all over the road. And so the the uh, cops assume that Thor did it. Yeah. And so Thor has to get taken away to animal mm-hmm. control. Right. I'm like, ah, oh, so that's why the con man was in there. Because yeah. otherwise, I'm like, why can't we cut this fucking scene out? It's mm-hmm. right. Because at that point, they're like, well, you did call in that complaint. Like it could have been Thor, and mm-hmm. she's you know has her reservations, and then he bites Uncle Ted. Oh. Thor's a biter. Yeah. Well, and anyway. not not only is he a biter, he's a fucking killer. Because at yes. this, let's not forget, he, he didn't just bite the con man. He fucking murdered him and tore him to shreds. Is what yeah. the police this believe, at think. least. Yeah. That's yeah, what they I think know. happened. Yeah. He, he just bites him when he murdered like, a person. Wouldn't there be some evidence on his coat or something yeah. like that? I mean, right? If you right. Yeah. completely yeah. eviscerated a yeah. person. He'd be covered in blood. Like he is at, at later on in this movie. Like yeah. we see that when he attacks the werewolf later on. I thought that a lot covered. of that was his uh, injuries that he ends up sustaining, but maybe not. I don't know. Like I assume you have I, it all over your muscle. Yeah, but I mean that was the moment that um because Thor had been in a fight with Uncle Ted in werewolf form, and he was bloody. Mm-hmm. She said he came home. He had been in a fight, mm-hmm. so he had blood on him. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. probably not enough for mm-hmm. how. That's right. The did. other guy was pulverized. Yeah. yeah. I did like kind of the gore in that scene. Um, yeah. Because the werewolf uh, like razors him up the midsection and somehow ends up taking off like a couple of his fingers. Mm-hmm. So he's got the, you know, dangling the broken, mm-hmm. you know, severed bloody mm-hmm. uh, yeah. digits in front of the camera. Yeah. The makeup effects in this are by Steve Johnson. They're solid. Steve Johnson also did Species. Sphere, sphere. <laughs> oh God! Uh, I think what, he actually. Were there makeup had, like, effects weird... in sphere? In sphere? I don't. Remember I don't recall yeah, there like being the... effects. I just well, remember I mean, a lot of giant that book octopi. over and over again. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess so. <laughs> a million copies of that book in the bookshelves is all and I remember. Timmy about or that whatever book. the AI alien thing that doesn't want to get upset or what happens when you get yeah whatever. Uh, oh, see, I don't even remember that. I've yeah, already started to forget. To them, right, yeah. Uh, but he also did, uh, I think it was The Abyss. Well, he did uh, oh, some yeah. of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies or Hellraiser or something. I mean, he was around in the 80s. He was famously married, I think, for two years to Linnea Quigley, the Scream Queen. Really? Yeah. I don't think that lasted very long, but I knew she married one of the makeup effects guys. Yeah, because they met during Nightmare on Elm Street 4 when he had to do a cast of her breasts. Yep. Might have been Night of the Demons, which I think he did the special effects for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We talked about right. that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We talked yep. about it on the Night of the Demons episode. There yep. we go. We did. And Steve Johnson. I recall that now. This is his werewolf. We remember some things we say. That's right. <laughs> it all comes back around. You got to pay attention. This is the long con. You have yep. to listen to all these episodes mm-hmm. and then it comes back. And the werewolf is played by Ken Kersinger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Ken Kersinger. The Ken Kersinger. <laughs> Stunt man extraordinaire. Yeah. Who the fuck is that? Oh, he's Jason in. Is it Freddy versus Jason? No. He's Jason in? No. He's part eight. Oh, no, wait. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right. It's Freddy he's Freddy versus, versus Jason. Jason. Yeah, because that was the one that Kane Hodder would like work so hard to get and then got screwed over on. That's right. Yep. Yes. So, yeah. Every horror movie yeah. fan knows that. He does in conventions. Kane. He's, he's around. Jason. He's a recognizable dude. He's big. He's in part eight, though. That's why I, oh, I thought gotcha. he's the cook that Jason throws into the at, oh, in New York. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the little diner. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Brought it all back. Yeah. Ken Kurzinger as the werewolf mm-hmm. in the suit running around in the woods. So this is what uh, Uncle Ted does. He's exhausted all scientific knowledge. He is in his little uh, alcove in his trailer. He's got a bunch of test tubes of urine. No, I'm sorry. Is it blood? It's yellow. It looks urine. It looks, looks like urine. urine. Yeah. 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 And microscopes. And a big. Bunch book. of ancient texts. <laughs> this is what I love. Monster tropes again. Oh, yeah. Werewolf lore. <laughs> lore of the werewolf. Yeah. And this big leather bound book. Because no one goes to the bookstore and buys like a modern printing of these no. things. They always have to have, it's more legitimate yeah. if you have the smelly, ancient yeah. leather. He, he, yeah. he fucking schlepped to Romania to get this shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. we don't know how long it's been since he's been cursed. He has a diary that eventually Mario Hemingway 
finds and starts reading. Right. And finds well, wait, out we know his... it's been at least six months, right? Because there's a six month time jump after he. Okay, so it's six months. Beginning in the movie, yes. Yeah, so but he's months. been in America for three months before the story starts. Right. right, but there's a but like after the cold open happens, it says six months later, and then she get that's when she gets the phone call, being like, "You've been home for three months." Yeah. Right. So like. So three, three months, months traveling he and three months over home. to Romania. Yeah. Yep. Bought books on <laughs> 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 what I <wanna> werewolf <laughs> war, trying to cure himself. The movie I want is what's happening in all that time. Like, who, where are the, all these people he's killing and managing? Like, obviously, yeah. he killed a bunch of people in that time. You want the movie of yeah. him discovering his new werewolf? Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, I agree with that. I'm just like, especially like, <laughs> especially like she, he's been home for three months. So he's been, what, 200 miles away from her for three months? Yeah. And, what he's been killing people for three months and like it's just now trickling down. Yeah, like I mean, it. It doesn't. Well, it doesn't almost, make sense. It if you feels think about like, it. but I can imagine in the book there's no cold open. We don't get to see. This is I think, I think maybe so. a problem structurally with the movie by starting it with the cold open and starting it with Air, uh, Michael Pere. You're like he's the central character. He's your, your protagonist in the movie, and he's going to be fighting against his own duality in order to protect his family that he puts in jeopardy. But that's not it. Nope. So a, we could I actually kinda like that. That's not it, though. But we could get rid of that whole cold open. Yeah, I mean it's cool, but that's all it like, is. And her long lost brother, who's been off doing good work for Greenpeace or you know yeah. whatever the United Nations or whatever, is come back home. But there's something off about him, and boom, story. That yeah. would be ba- oh oh. I of course, this movie idea. is like 76 minutes long, Ooh. so I mean that would make it like not a feature, I suppose, right? I yeah, but no, I like where you're going with that because like. Like a lot of times, the werewolf movie twist is who is the werewolf, right? And yeah. that's this movie you know from the fucking jump who it yeah. is. Mm-hmm. So you're just like you're you're. It's always weird to watch a movie where you're five steps ahead of the protagonist and what's happening. Mm-hmm. Like it's okay to be a, st- a, a step ahead of them for a few minutes or for a scene. It's not really okay to be ahead of them for the f- whole movie, right? You know. Um, mm-hmm. but I like what you're saying. I would almost like it if like he went away to war and came back and they thought he just had like really bad PTSD, yeah. but he came back a werewolf. That right, would be yeah. so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're, this is the yeah. movie right here. We're writing right. a new movie. And she like yeah. feels burdened to take care of him because he's been through all this shit, but then yeah. like it ends up being all of their undoing. You know? I like oh, this movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. All right, well, we're we, going to have to write we, it. We make Bad Moon. <laughs> yeah. We'll just change, but change I mean, we all know why they needed the cold open. They needed boobs. Yeah. That was why. Yeah, because they're brother and sister, so they're not going to get them any exactly. other way. So needed sp- boobs. You're saying for your exploitation movie boob quotient, yeah, you got to have that. Without those yeah. boobs, it's it's more of a kid movie. Mm-hmm. But that's what's <laughs> weird about it. I it's know like, it's so weird. I know. <laughs> it's like we've got, well, you know, either uh, a soft core sex or graphic, almost graphic sex, uh, and gore, and then right after that, it's like this family drama for you know. The most of the runtime, it's bizarre. Punctuated every once in a while by more graphic gore. Yes, <laughs> it's like yeah. what? There's a lot of like, like I said, I was talking about with Eric Red's like weird character study moments. We're living in Mariel Hemingway's house with her a lot. Yeah. Not so much with her kid. I feel like the kid's not in the movie a whole not lot. very much. I know it's Mariel Hemingway a lot though, just doing yeah. home stuff. See, I almost like would have preferred a version of this movie where it was more. The kid and the dog, because it's a boy and his dog, right? Right. It's a boy and his dog is a better movie, uh, you know, not, mm-hmm. I don't want to say trope, but... Uh, it is, it, though. It, it's, a, <laughs> it's a better narrative mm-hmm. device. Okay, mm-hmm. it's basically said the same thing. Uh, <laughs> then, like, you know, the the dynamic between the brother and the, the sister, you know? Mm-hmm. It would have been cooler if it was, you know, he's moving in. Like, the kid is protect because, like, something happened to dad. And yeah. the kid is protector of mom. And the dog is protector of them all. Yeah. And then dude moves in. And then you have that kind of, you know, the kid is kind of having to be like, you know, he's a kid, but he he's, has to he's have the man his, of the house. He's got to be the man of the no house. Dad. Yeah. I expected that narrative right. to totally That's take off better. of being yeah. like, like he's the man of the house because he's, a, she's a single mom. And like between him and the dog, they take care of business. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. But this is solely the dog taking care of business. That's yeah. for sure. The kid doesn't do shit in this movie. Well, Marielle Hemingway, you know, I mean, they build her up the whole thing with the, her being the lawyer to shoo the guy off. It's like, okay, so she's capable and can take care of herself. And then now we're going to bring in the fucking, you know, the wild thing from outside. But even at the end, I don't want to get there right now, but mm-hmm. maybe we have to, uh, the, you know, she's still able to, she blast the fucking thing away. It's like basically a team effort between her and Thor eventually right. vanquish the werewolf right. in the kid's bedroom. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Does a howling ending. Yeah. She shoots I mean, him a bunch of time, then Thor knocks him out the Defenstrated, window. yeah. I mean, I, I, I see what they were trying to do. You know, in this scenario, we see that she can fully handle herself with a jackass. We see that in the beginning. And I think the whole point of it was, can she still handle herself when it's someone she loves? I wish they would have leaned into that more, I, I agree. Right. I agree. I <laughs> wish they would have done that more. Why wasn't she, like, completely heartbroken and distraught that, like, her brother turned on her like this, right? Yeah. Like, that should have been a really emotional thing to, like, yeah. have to kill your own brother. because yes. yeah. And it didn't seem like she cared that much. Yeah. Well, because the brother takes steps, I guess, toward the beginning of the, the his adventure here in the Pacific Northwest to go off in the woods and chain himself. He handcuffs himself to a tree. Turns into a werewolf, which nobody can hear. Where's his, where's his sweatpants every time? Because you're going to pop yeah. out of them. You're going to yeah. burst right. them open. Well, I so. assume he takes them off. and you know. But we see him later in the sweatpants. I don't think he'd got, gone the full route of he's got to pull them off and then uh, handcuff himself to the tree. Mm-hmm. But one night, because Thor pre- prevents him from getting out before the, the sun goes down all the way, or as it's on its way down, he uh, misses that and turns into a werewolf, runs around. That's when he's killing people. And then the second night, apparently he doesn't handcuff himself then either. I kind of, uh, so, I mean, I'm making leaps here to make sense of this, but I think, because like we see later on that he's really becoming unhinged, right? Yeah. So I wonder if that second night when he didn't handcuff himself when he could have, that's just when he's just like, you know what? He's like, fuck I'm it. I'm done. I tried. Yeah. It's the I've defeated. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it won. I'm just going to be what I am. But that's mm-hmm. me doing a lot of homework for the movie because the movie yeah. doesn't say that. So I know. No, yeah. Yeah, because we were saying he's making some decisions later on that seem like, you know, why would you? His whole thing seems to be, pardon me, the reason that he's here at their house is because medical science has failed him. He's tried every cure for this werewolfism and so now he thinks that the magic of being with his family unit and the family love familial love will somehow cause the beast the wild part of him to go into remission Mm -hmm. there is no lore anywhere for any ailment that says that's the case not even werewolf like beyond werewolves like have you ever heard of any movie being like family love will cure it like any lore ever like no this dude's just like he's like if i have to suffer you know i might as well suffer in comfort i guess or like you know bum off my sister while i suffer i guess like i mean they take the love conquers all thing a bit too seriously maybe it's because it doesn't uh, matter it's a bit literal yeah it doesn't work out that way though it's not a fucking care bear movie (laughs) right (laughs) well and it it doesn't work out that way anyway no it doesn't work it doesn't work at all but see that's why we're figuring that it's because he's losing his mind. He just doesn't know. He thinks he's making sound, rational decisions, yeah. but he's impaired that, <laughs> by, that has by to the be condition, the infection in his blood, or because he's yeah. lived with it for so long. Because eventually, uh, Mario Hemingway uh, ventures, you know, sees him go out running, which is you know his cover for I'm going to go out and chain myself to a tree, and she follows him and catches him before he ties himself to a tree, and. His character there, I don't know if it's because it's moments before the transformation, is completely different to her. Yeah. You know, you should have listened to the dog, Janet. <laughs> oh my it's a god. Line in this movie. <laughs> that whole fucking scene is great. It's great. It's so <laughs> out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like his I know we've talked about like he's he's kind of having these moments where he's starting to kind of lose it, but they don't hit it hard enough. We don't really pick up on that. Mm-hmm. So then his total freak out during the transformation is so fucking bizarre. But I, I get it because like that would be like, an, like you're switching from a human brain to a wolf brain in a matter of minutes. So I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I get why it makes no sense and why it's out of nowhere because your body's going through these insane changes in a short amount of time. He's basically like, well, I guess you, well, cause he's assuming that, that I think he's assuming she read his diary yeah. because you already know what's going on here. So fuck it. Basically, I'm just going to change now and yeah. kill you because mm-hmm. you were stupid enough to come out here. And I told you, you should have listened to the fucking dog or whatever the yeah. hell. Cause dogs, the main character in the movie. Yes. Was right. <laughs> uh, and so then he transforms into a werewolf in what has to be ladies and gentlemen, one of the worst. Cursed werewolf is still worse. Scenes. Transformation scenes. It's bad. Really? Yeah, Cursed was really bad. Do you not remember? Cursed, Cursed was like, bad. Cursed was like PlayStation 1 graphics. 
Cursed was really bad. At the end? Yeah, Cursed when Judy Greer really transforms at the very end. Cursed and Cursed. Worse than this? Yes. yes and, it was. and it was much later than this, which made it even more unforgivable. Cursed was yes. really bad. Cursed, like. Oh, that was 2000. And 2003. Three, yeah. And this is 96. Yeah. Like, for 96, it's, it, it, I mean, it's not good, but it's not terrible. It's yeah. Hideously awful. It's a lot of warp and bubble, <laughs> yeah. like warp tool, a bunch. Yeah. You know, that's all it is. It's just warp tool. Yeah, it's the morph or whatever. Which, if they didn't do that and just, like, did like stop motion effects it would look so much better yeah. you know well i mean it's like one of those things that, as we were watching it and i was just sitting there going like this is catastrophically bad like it's you have bad. failed <laughs> on every level transforming this man into this beast which is a shame because the actual wolf design is good yeah. so to, yeah, to it is. shit on it in the transformation is really unfortunate well this is the other difference between this and the unrated cut the unrated cut eric red said he's lived with everybody giving him shit about it, and he hates that transformation scene so he cut it out good so if you watch the <laughs> the long of the director's cut this scene that we're talking about is missing but it's awful <laughs> awful one of the worst it, werewolf transformation keeps, scenes of all it's time long. when you think it's, it's gonna long. stop it just keeps getting worse like yeah. if they yeah. would have stopped cut it short sooner it wouldn't have been as bad but they just keep they lean into the badness yeah. Like, they do. <laughs> they do. yeah i'm like what they could do stuff in the 80s with latex rubber yes exactly that they're trying to they're, i don't know what they're doing with the computer effect i mean obviously by the time you get to the wolf man uh in 2010 you know the the i mean it's still rubbery cg but it this is not even attempting that it's like this is taking 2d images and warping them into it's like another. i just learned yeah. photoshop for the first yeah. time it's, yeah. Yeah. it's like it's yeah. bad and like i mean i don't know if you guys know how much this movie costs to make but when you know how much it costs to make it's really even how more shameful do you want to take make? a guess because i need 1996 17 million dollars Holly. Mm, 12 million. 7 million dollars. <laughs> it well, actually, it yeah. only made 1 million at the box office. Well, yeah, because it wasn't promoted. But yeah. I can see that it cost that much because it basically There's is only like two stage locations bound. In the yeah, though. you're yeah. in the house. Yeah. You have four yeah. people in two in locations. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And one of the people is a child actor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. And the dog's not getting paid, so. No. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's handlers getting paid. Yeah, yeah the handler got paid. Pretty but. good amount of money. Well, yeah, there's four dogs though, mm-hmm. so you got to split it. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Is that, I don't feel like I saw the whole seven million on the screen. I really don't. Like, I feel like I was starting to see it up until that transformation because I thought all the effects up until then were really good. Yeah, the 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 practical <laughs> gore yeah. effects. Yeah, but the transformation they couldn't handle. Nope. Um, so don't do it if you can't or do it in a way where you show like a hand change and a foot and then cut to the full werewolf do that cheat that I think that's works what, well in the director's cut I think they just use you know that kind of wolf man version of him yeah uh, I think that's as far as it goes and then like in the next scene you know you see him running through the woods and he's uh, he's the full beast but <coughs> pardon me so during this moment of uh you know the mom being menaced by the monster he's like okay fine i'm gonna kill you because that's what i do i'm a werewolf there's no coming back from this the kid hops on his bike and goes all et very et like <laughs> bikes to the shelter where they're holding the dog mm-hmm. and i'm not entirely sure what happened there i know that the whole idea is the kid's gonna go and like get the dog out yeah but i'm like I was very confused by like what was happening, like the kids sneaking up and the gates chained. And so he's tugging on it like he's going to be able to break the chain. Somehow. Yeah, that kid's an idiot. And then the big bright <laughs> lights come on, like the motion detector. Or some, it's more mm-hmm. like somebody knows that you're here. And he goes, oh, shit. I think it might be one of the only swear words in the movie. And then he. Uh, don't you touch my fucking son later on. Right. Yeah. At the later, very end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then instead of like backing away because like oh shit you've been discovered then he climbs the fence and goes toward and i'm like are there guards coming out no it's not an animal shelter it's not it's all fucking volunteers there's no guards in the animal yeah, shelter no. how did he get the dog out of the cage because he can't like they're not locked the- it wasn't locked the cages oh, are let them out. animal shelters don't lock those cages. Okay. No, I thought maybe they would be you individually just fl- no you just flip too. them up and yeah. that's it it's just like regular like uh chain link gate that's it yeah okay. that's all it is and then like, shelter dogs they can't you know they can't Speaking of Homeward Bound, when they get caught at that dog, the dog catcher catches them and take them to shelter in Homeward Bound. That's what this shelter looked like. I was like, is this the same (laughs) set from that? It looks just like it. 
Or maybe it was yeah. still in storage. Who knows? Right. I don't know who made Homeward Bound. That was Disney, wasn't it? Homeward I think Bound it might have been Disney Universal. Movie. I don't know. Wow. Well, yeah. I don't know. It was not big... my favorite genre. The animal. <laughs> You're not well versed uh, in the yeah, animal. Yeah, not sorry. my favorite <laughs> genre either, Colin. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, so this allows Thor to get loose and run his way back to the home so he can be there he's when. the best dog ever. Yes. Best dog ever. So the wolf man, wolf thing, werewolf, like chases Mario Hemingway back to the house mm-hmm. for the final climactic showdown. Yeah. And he fucking Jack Torrance is his way through that bedroom door. Yeah. I was like, wow, we're leaning really hard on that shining imagery here, aren't we? Like she's leaning up against the door and like the, like, did you guys notice the werewolf slaps a lot in this movie? He's very yeah. slappy. Like very slappy. that's like, like he doesn't bite people very often. I he know. just cuts with his claws or yeah. like slaps yeah. a bunch. He just does a bunch of like, you know, it's an animatronic head, which it's the limitations of technology, right? Like that's why they're doing that. Cause they can't like afford to have him like, bite and pull apart people yeah, with his and mouth that, all the time. I mean, you can, I suppose you could argue that's like the man part of him that's using his hands. Yeah, Ooh, but, I like that. Yeah. It's deep. <laughs> yeah, I, but I, I didn't buy that. It's like the idea that once he's a werewolf, but yeah, he picks the kid up by the throat, you know, instead mm-hmm. of just killing him right off. I'm like, the werewolf would just kill him right off. Yes. You, yeah. know, so, you know, he's yeah. dead. Yeah. Or bite him and carry him away or yeah. whatever. Be horrible. But no, he picks him up very dramatic like so Thor can jump on him. Mm-hmm. Mario Hemingway can do the Halloween thing and blast him with the gun, and then Thor knocks him out the window. Thor defenestrates him, and then they have like a a cool moment. I think of like him laying side by side. I was really hoping for an aerial shot of that, of like the two, of the, like the beast and the dog laying side by side as they like what you th- you think they're both dying because it looks like they're dying. Like in the yard, I would love like an aerial pan up from that. Yeah. You didn't get it. Nope. Didn't nope. get it. Nope. <laughs> no, it has one of the goofiest endings because the werewolf. Limps away. Yeah. Thor goes after him. Yeah. And so the next morning, Michael Pere all busted up and gory looking because of his battle with the dog. The night and it before. does look cool. I think the effects in this scene look good on on Michael Pare. Yeah, but then it made me think like, so this guy doesn't get wounded or injured in any other like he's not accounting for weird scratches and you know I mean that's the thing about werewolves right you go out at night run around bare feet. But he never had anybody fight back. Like yeah, he just killed people and that was thistles. it. Like. Thistles aren't going to fucking cut you open that deep like <laughs> Thor would. There's thistles. thistles. You wake up with fuck covered are you talking in burrs. About? I don't know. No, but like this, <laughs> he would just fucking fought a dog and got thrown through a window and shot a bunch of times. Like, it makes sense that he's this, this cut up. Yeah. 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 But still alive, having been shot all the time, yeah. he still has the battle wounds and the scars. And yeah. then he just looks at Thor. <laughs> just do it. And then we don't see what happens, but we assume we we cut and there's a sound of like Thor attacking him. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of weak. Yeah, but like he was already almost dead at that point, so yeah, it's true. You know, you know the game is over. Why did he just mm-hmm. die in the lawn? Yeah. Do we have to have him turn back to a human so he could verbally say, you know, he's like acquiescing to Thor at that moment and yeah. saying. I'm giving you the power to kill me. I think it's kind of like I like I can't beat this, so you might as well kill me. Like the best thing for everyone yeah, is and he if doesn't you just wanna, kill me. And now that he's a human again, he doesn't want to face what he just did to his own family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mercy killing. Yeah, Thor. Thor's the hero. Thor. I mean, Thor. The, Thor is pure. He, <laughs> he's, he's made it pretty damn clear that like his family is all he has left, mm-hmm. and now he's just fucked that up. And if so. they can't heal him like he thought, yeah. then nothing can. So yeah. Thor might as well kill him. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael Parry was freezing his ass off during that scene. Yes, he had he was. so much you could see his breath completely yeah. naked. A bunch. Yeah, you could see his breath That's a bunch. I was like, Oh, this poor man. This yeah, is probably thinking, what temperature does it have to be that you can see it's like thirty? Thirty eight, thirty so, five. Yeah. So you're below forty degrees, probably. Yeah. And he's in the woods naked <laughs> with all those effects on him. Yeah. yeah. Poor man. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> he he <laughs> suffered for his craft. I know. Michael Pare. Mm-hmm. I heard on the commentary track for this apparently Eric Red was a big fan of Michael Prey. He said he got along extremely well with the dogs, and he said he's one of the best actors that he's ever worked with. And uh, although he disparages uh, Mario Hemingway a lot, because he basically, Eric Red basically Damn. was saying that Mario Hemingway was there for the check, and Michael Pere was there to like turn in a performance because I, I think it's a Michael job. Pere Everyone's is, there for a check, like yeah. But Michael Pere, I feel, is one of those guys who's always trying to prove himself. 
You know? I agree. Yeah, well, I yeah. think so too. Good. Because he comes off in a lot of ways as like a one note kind of. I mean, he's got like the kind of uh, like Rocky New York, you know, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Cadence to the way he talks. So he's like trying to prove that you know I can be an actual emotive mm-hmm. actor. Mm-hmm. And I and, think, yeah, no, I I think I think he was fine in this. I did not care for Miss Hemingway. <laughs> Did you feel she was phoning it in, or is it just the stuff that she's the material? I think it was a little bit of both. I don't think she was given the best dialogue to work with, but I also thought that her acting just sucked. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't find her particularly um, gravitating or e- easy to latch on to. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder, you know, had this been anyone else that could be on the Freak Show Wall of Fame, how much more enjoyable it would be? Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, apparently Eric Red also believes that she's yeah, yeah. cast. Yeah. So there you go. Nepotism at work again, right? You know, this was ninety six. Last name, yeah. What year did Buffy come out? Right around this time, I want to say. Right. I'm just looking at this font on the case. Oh here. no, the font is of the time. The font is that like is... straight up late nineties, early aughts. Like everyone was using it. It's kind of that. It's the like the Bram Stoker's Dracula font. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, the artwork for this movie is incredibly dated. What's our, uh, I can't see it there, but what's our uh, tagline? The tagline. Half for man, movie? half wolf, total terror. It works. Mm, it's uh, not, uh, not very inspiring, but okay. They weren't, uh, it's not a lie. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, anything uh, last or final observations on Bad Moon before we go around the room and uh, find out what we actually thought of the movie? No Bad Moon Rising in this. Were you guys expecting that needle drop? Um, I was. Well, I was debating. Do they don't have the money for it. Yeah, but <laughs> after American Werewolf did it, I don't think you can. every movie does it though. Every like, Werewolf movie. Holly once. No, every movie. What was the one that Curse did? Uh, it had something at the beginning of Cursed it. Cursed had a Creedence song, I think, yeah, but I don't okay. think it was that one. Yeah. But like Holly, you brought up one time off mic, and this is like it's it just keeps proving itself true. Yeah. If you have a helicopter in your movie, if your movie, you have a, if you have a Vietnam sequence in your movie, you, you will have bad fortunate moon. son. Yeah, you will have it. <laughs> it's just inevitable. Kong Skull Island had Bad Moon Rising as they're flying the helicopter to the yeah. island. Yeah, like, yeah. it's it's a trope. And yeah, I guess it's all started by Apocalypse Now, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Helicopter equals CCR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just well, that that's... was the ride of the Valkyries, though. But I think did Apocalypse Now have some CCR in there. Yes, I think it did. It probably yeah. did. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, first of all, ladies and germs, we're going to answer some of your mail. We're going to summon our mailman Igor to bring us that mail. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, right, thank you, Igor. Thanks. He's got his sweatpants and handcuffs. He's ready. Ready to chain himself to a tree. Yeah, he does. He doesn't know what movie we watched, just watched. He just does that's that. just that's just his yeah, regular just routine. So you know, at least I they're like clean he's sweatpants. This trying time. to keep yeah. us safe, though. Yeah. So there. You know. He, um, he cares. Now. He cares. About us. Well, let's remind the good folks who are listening how they can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. MF Mad writes in. What up? He says, uh, is there an actual Hall of Fame list that can be posted? I would be very interested to see who is on there by now, aside from the top of the list of um, course I'll start one will you <laughs> yeah I'll start one. I'm not doing that research <laughs> yeah. know, you have to go back to every episode and I mean, go like who is no. it oh, no shit, I'll start right. one for for the uh, time I have been on oh, I will start go. one so that's fair <laughs> uh, about bad moon Shaky subject matter writes in. <laughs> Shaky subject matter. I mean, that matter. could also be the name of this podcast. So, you know, <laughs> that's fantastic. Alternate title for this yeah. podcast. Well, Shaky asks, or Shaky says, it's good to see. It's good to see the owner of the Daily Planet meet up with Ralph Hinckley's star student in this movie. Oh yeah, Mary Hemingway. This she, might be like one of my favorite cut. write-ins of all time because I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, it is because she owns the Daily Planet mm-hmm. in uh, <laughs> and, Superman and then Four. Four. The oh Quest for Peace. Yeah. Yep. Ralph Hinckley is the name of the greatest American hero. TV show starring William Cat. He yeah. was a teacher, and he taught. Guess who? Michael Pere. Wow. Wow. That's was in great. A that lot of episodes is a of that fucking show. deep cut. <laughs> I appreciate that effort. That is fucking fantastic. Wow. Good. I what, liked wow. That one. Great. 
Uh, Robin Linderman Silverberg says, I only remember something about a family dog playing sort of a big part in the plot. A sort yeah. of big part. Yeah, but see, he <laughs> took it the way that I took it the first time I but saw this. But he said this. that's all he remembers. Yeah. 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 But that's why so he's he like, there's a dog way. in it a lot, basically. Right. Yeah. It's like, there's a bunch of stuff about a dog kind of getting in the way of the actual story. <laughs> yeah. It's not what he said, Colin. Uh, about <laughs> Chopping Mall, Dom Cree wanders. Hey, Dom. He says, uh, I'm so disappointed that Evolver didn't get a mention on this show. I thought it did. I, did but you see Evolver? No, you know? I thought Sean had. Uh, here I am Evolver. speaking for him when he's, you know, on assignment tonight. But <laughs> 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 but I, I, maybe we talked about it off mic. Yeah. My, my memory fails Evolver is me. like a movie. We failed you. I'm it's sorry. It's a kid who plays virtual reality games with, there's a robot in it. And nope, eventually never seen that. he plays against uh, the actual robot. And I think it looks maybe something like the chopping mall. Oh, like the robots in chopping mall. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. I have not seen it, Dom, but we also didn't mention trapped, which is a movie from 1973, which is fucked up on that episode. Apparently, which is about James Brolin gets trapped in a shopping mall with Doberman pinchers that guard the place. Uh, can we watch this, that on the freak show? That sounds awesome. There you go. Boom. I do love some James Brolin. I don't know if it's available anywhere, but uh, we also, in one of our social media posts, we posted, we missed the fact that Kelly Maroney, the star of Chopping Mall, is also in Night of the Comet. Right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I'm like... Eh, we eh. were trying to figure it out when we were watching it. Oh, man. Yeah, it was her and... Uh, oh, God, who's the other? Mary Mary Stewart Masters. No, what's... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Okay, it's going to come to me later. Yep. I was like, in Mary Stewart Masters was in this? No, <laughs> the girl in Night of the Comet. Oh. Catherine Mary Stewart. There you go. Boom. And uh, and Kelly Maroney. But I also said that Russell Todd was from Friday the 13th Part 2. <laughs> Sean Roger writes in and says, you're correct on both. You also named two movies much better than Chopping Mall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so extra I agree. points. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Thanks for writing in. Uh, Always Mark- great to hear from you. Mark Harrison writes in. He says, if I was homeless, I'd like to sleep in a furniture shop. No, I mean, we, wouldn't we, we all? Uh, no, we wouldn't. We weren't. You, I'm sorry, Holly, you weren't here. <laughs> but I talked about how gross it is to think about the fact that I could have bought furniture that people fucked on. But- you got to see this movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, every, that's yeah. All that, they, they stay fuck. late at a shopping mall so they can party in the furniture shop. And they fuck on the display mattresses. So like, dude, I, I can't friend. buy a mattress from a from a store like that. I can't. Can't buy a mattress that people could have fucked cool on. She's cool with uh, stores that are manned by robots. Yeah, yeah. Ro- that, robots like, can robot touch my mattress. I'm yeah, <laughs> really weird. not sure how often uh, workers or whoever would stay at a mall and fuck in a furniture store, though. How in the 80s and happen? 90s, anything was possible. And when I worked at Macy's, we never stayed late and went down, <laughs> and went down to bedding. We didn't. Well, that's the thing. In Chopping Mall, they don't work in those stores. They work in the other stores in the mall and hang and then go to that store after they're off their, to fuck. One of them, their dad, like, owns the furniture shop. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So they don't work there. They just sure. go there to fuck. Yeah. Right. And so uh, Andrew John wrote in and he said he loves uh, Chopping Mall. And uh, Nuvato Judoka said you ran. You did two movies in a row with Garrett Graham here, and this, he's in Chopping Mall as the uh, the scientist or the scientist, whatever the guy who runs the, the Homer Simpson running yeah, the controls, the control yeah. Room, <laughs> and he was also the school teacher in Sidekicks. This is true. And then I said, "My God, you're right. This is a horrible oversight because Garrett Graham is on the Saturday Night Freak <gasps> Show Hall of Fame because he was beef." In Phantom of the Paradise, oh, which we oh did, my god, which yeah, this, is like his biggest role that he's done. Welcome to the wall. Yeah. The wall's getting very full. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> with There's pe- not enough nails. With people no. that yeah. most people have no idea who That's they what, are. Igor's been working overtime to like hang up all their pictures, and it's just it's true. You know, it's some like, of them are crooked. It's like and, the fucking hall in Harry Potter with all the rules hung up on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> and Igor's got the little ladder that he keeps yeah. dragging out every time Igor's to hang up. Igor's what's his face with the fucking cat. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not a. <laughs> I like Harry Potter, but it's not a Harry Potter podcast, I, so you're I, fine. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, all right then. So this is the moment you've all been waiting for. What did we think of the movie Bad Moon? Colin, what did you think of Bad Moon? Was it on the rise? Dun dun dun. <laughs> well um, done. yeah. Okay, so I have seen this movie twice before. 
one time I thought for sure it was weird. I'm having like this weird flashback. Like I thought we did it on the Saturday night freak show. Like I remember talking about this movie, but it was either a, one of those episodes, which we've done listener. I'm sorry. Peeling back the curtain. There have been episodes that we have done in movies that have been lost to time because of computer gremlins that you never heard. And this might've been one of them or Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, Getting old and see now. It's, also possible. It's very possible that you're remembering conversations from dog soldiers because we talked about this well, quite I remember, a bit. Oh, d- did we talk yeah, about I bad moon? So. But did. I remember I'm watching. Sure I talked about how much I liked it on the. I yeah. watched the uh, the director's cut. Like I remember watching when the Shout Factory one came out. So I don't know. Travis brought it over, maybe or something. Yeah. Um, and I have not had a good relationship with this movie. Uh, I've always looked at it as, I mean, the writings really poor i think like all the dialogue that's coming out of the humans mouths is not good and that's why i I don't know if i necessarily blame mario hemingway or michael pere you know i mean i I think they're both actors of limited range to be honest with you but um some of it is because the material that they're delivering is just like you're telling me this is from written by the guy who wrote some of my favorite movies the hitcher in near dark. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, I don't see it. You know, it's like, what? Um, I think this time I appreciated it more because I saw it as a dog movie. Right. I think this, so this might be one of the best dog movies ever made. (laughs) Um, you know, which is about a hero dog and a dog. This is your Avengers. If you're a dog, right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like this is like the best it gets for dog movies. Right. What did we watch? I say was a horror movie for dogs. What? Oh, what was it? It was earlier this year. There's something, a bunch of really bad things were happening to dogs in that movie. Yeah. But I we've watched a lot of bad dog movies. Yeah. I know I've seen other hero dog movies, but now I'm, I'm, you know, where I'm like, this dog is the best dog. And like, but this one was pretty good. I mean, Thor is a pretty good movie dog. And so I'm also, I'm, I'm tempted. Like, this is where I'm on the fence. I'm like, you got a cool looking werewolf, right? Werewolf looks cool. It's not articulated awesome. It's kind of in that the uncanny valley between like it looks really cool in the pictures, but when you see it move and you see the you know animatronics, I'm like, oh, it's like a Chuck E. Cheese thing. Raw head Rex really? syndrome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when you see it full body and it's a guy in a suit running around, it's like, well, then because even like at one point, big dramatic moment, the werewolf busts in through the plate glass window at the front of the house, and clearly in that shot, he falls on his ass. And then the next cut is him going, Rawr, you know, yeah. standing up and going, Rawr. Yeah. He's clumsy as fuck. Um, so it's not a good movie werewolf. It lo- It's a cool design, the makeup of it. But the execution, he's let down by the cinematography, the director, and the performer. Mm-hmm. Um the look of this movie turned me off. It's the brightest night ever. I mean, they have like every light <laughs> yeah, on it and it looks completely stage bound. Um, and bedtime in this movie is at like five o'clock. Yeah. Every what? time she tells the kid or Thor that it's bedtime, it's fully light out. Yeah. Cause I can't tell if it's summer, if it's the fall, the lineman, not the lineman, but the guy out working for the forestry service. I think service it's gotta is- be summer. Um, the kid's not in school, and she made a strawberry rhubarb pie. Yeah. It's got to uh, be summer. Gotta, it's got to be gotta, summer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those days seem long. It's got to be summer. Long. Yeah. Well, see, I've had like an hour to think about this, and I'm still like on the fence. My gut is telling me that I did not like this movie, but I did like it better this time than I did prior. And do I think that werewolf aficionados have to see it? I think werewolf, there you go. Well, werewolf aficionados have to see this movie because it's probably, if you haven't heard of it, then you're going to like this werewolf probably. Um, So, yeah, I don't know. It's the Saturday Night Freak Show, and we're talking to a special audience. I think maybe you got to see Bad Moon. You got to at least check it out. Um, You know, if you like dogs and you like werewolves. (laughs) Then you if you like bad dogs, bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. watch it. <laughs> yeah, if you're a dog person. So there you go. All right. I'm going to go with the yes. Thumbs up for Bad Moon. Check it out. Um, You know what? I honestly, Colin, I'm I'm right there with you. I, this, this whole time I've been thinking, do I like this movie? Do I not like this movie? Because there are a lot of things that I really don't like about it. It Like we said earlier, you know, with, with Eric Red movies, 
he does lose you like in the middle of the movie and almost every movie I've seen of his, he loses you part way through. And this was no different. Like at one point I was, I was texting my mom. I was just like, Hey mom, how you doing? Like I was just like, I'm kind of, kind of lost a little bit from this movie. Um, the, yeah, I agree. The writing is terrible and the execution of the transformation and the animatronics, it's just, it's bad. It's really bad. Um, but the design I did really like, and I was okay with the, there wasn't a lot of gore in it, but the gore that was in it, I, I was okay with it. Um, I thought it was kind of, there was several scenes that I thought were really fun. You know, I liked the, I liked the biting of the helmet and it just kind of like squirted mm-hmm. blood out. I liked that. Yeah. I, I, I got a lot of satisfaction from the death of the con man, even though they didn't show a lot. I still just really loved that moment. Um, Cause it was like in Jurassic park when the lawyer gets eaten. Yes. That's what it basically mm-hmm. was. That's exactly, right? you know? you're exactly right. Um, so I think there were more enjoy, enjoyable points of this movie than there were unenjoyable points. So, and it's brief. And it's brief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? It's like an hour and 19 minutes or something. It's some, yeah. mm, let's see. 79 minutes. Yes. Yeah, you're correct. It's barely a feature. Yeah, film. Barely. <laughs> there are Game of Thrones episodes almost that uh-huh. long. Yeah. yeah. No, totally. So I, yeah, I think I'm going to have to recommend Bad Moon. I think. I think it's I think it's more enjoyable than not enjoyable. I think I think you can have a lot of fun with it. And if you are a werewolf aficionado, then you should definitely check it out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes to Bad Moon, Michaela. Obviously, I make extra allowances for this movie because, like I said, I collect werewolf movies. And Colin challenged me to find ten that are better than Amer- than <laughs> Halloween because I said I didn't like it. So, like, uh, I I take in all of them and like. There are not very many different stories you can tell with werewolves. It's it sucks. It sucks to like a a, a subgenre that there's like so little room to play in. Um, and this movie, like, I wouldn't say it tra- it makes huge leaps or it does anything really out of the box because it doesn't. But it's it's something like you've probably never seen before because no one has ever fucking heard of this movie. So I feel like it's my job to tell people about it <laughs> because no one knows it exists. Um, I paid an obscene amount of money for this clamshell standard F DVD we have sitting on the table in front of us because when I bought it, it was out of print and this movie was not available anywhere. Um, and then of course, as soon as I bought it, like six months later, shop factory's like, guess what we're doing on Blu-ray. And I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like I, like I paid $25 for this DVD <laughs> at a used DVD store because like, yeah. I couldn't find it anywhere at the time. And like, I could have the shop factory Blu-ray for that price at this point, but it's, I mean, it's a good dog movie. Uh, the book is amazing and like I think that does cloud my love for the movie a little bit because mm-hmm. I do love the book so much and the book is so good I, you got definitely gotta read the book and I would love to hear a great audiobook with like a really good retelling I think that would be awesome like um, right now I'm listening to uh, Michael C. Hall's reading of Pet Cemetery, the audiobook yes. and I'm just like Michael C. Hall should read every fucking horror novel <laughs> ever because it's so it's so good so I would love like a good <laughs> audiobook of it too um, but yeah this movie like got some huge flaws got some huge problems but like i feel like you come into every werewolf movie knowing it's not gonna be perfect like yeah there's so few of them that like you you can't expect a lot of them if you want to enjoy them Uh, it's i i love it i think it's a great movie i think people need to see it definitely not without its flaws definitely has some parts that don't make sense um but just and like i kind of wish there was like a little bit more 90s stank on it i feel like it's kind of sterilized of like the yeah, 90s stank. there's there's not really anything that it's like full on oh this is a 90s movie yeah it doesn't have the new metal no uh, needle no. drop no needle point. drops not yeah, a but it does have the drop. lights are on everywhere and that cinema the widescreen cinematography right. that's like it's 90s yeah 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 but i uh, i really enjoy it i'm really glad that i finally got around to bringing it here because this is the place to talk about a movie like this for sure. Like, yeah. like if I mm-hmm. want to talk about this with anyone else, I would have to do so much groundwork of even explaining what this movie <laughs> is. You know? So, um, I, I would definitely recommend it. I think it's awesome. Obviously as a pro it's problems, but it's gore is good. Um, it's, it's like the dog act. Like I said, the dog is the best actor in this movie yeah. by a long shot. Um, and like it's pacing and structure is slightly different than most werewolf movies. So mm-hmm. I think it's worth checking out just for that. Yeah. Top five werewolf movies. Five? Okay. Uh, Dog Soldiers, An American Werewolf in London, uh, The Original Wolfman, Late Phases, probably? I really liked that one. 
And then like five is probably Bad Moon is probably fighting a wildling for this one for five. Holly. Yeah, I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say dog. Howling. Yeah, I'm gonna say dog soldiers and um, werewolf in London. I think this is probably in there. I'm not doing this in order, by the way. Right. I'd probably say this is in there. Um, the new Wolfman and the original Wolfman. I like that one too. Mm-hmm. Probably both Wolfman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'll go with the original Wolfman. Yeah. I'll go with Curse of the Werewolf, Oliver Reed. I'll go with American Werewolf, which is the greatest werewolf movie of oh, all time. Oh, yeah. Of all time. Uh, yeah, what would it be? Is there Ginger Snaps? Well, I got to put the oh, wolf I forgot. Man. Oh, I forgot about Ginger Snaps. God, yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. I forgot about it. Yeah, I got to put the Wolfman 2010 in there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, eh, Wolf, Ginger Snaps, or uh, Howling. See, the Howling doesn't even show But I love the... Top. Yeah, I know. Because maybe I was a bigger fan earlier and as time goes on i get less of a fan but i still love the the transformation and the werewolf stuff in that best part yeah yeah i don't know toss up i'm gonna go with ginger snaps for number five ginger Mm -hmm. snaps is solid has it been done on this show Mm, i don't think put it on the list then i don't think so it's a great movie all right uh next week we're gonna be watching a movie that's chosen by colin oh boy what are we watching next week uh, next week, we're getting in the holiday spirit. It's like our first. Is it our only holiday themed horror movie that we've done? Um, yeah. you, I mean, you tried to pull Thanksgiving into your last pick, That's but true. none of us bought it. Yeah, yeah. With Angel. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, saddle up for New Year's Evil. New Year's right. Evil slasher movie from like 1980 or 81, something like that. Always so, down for a slasher. Yeah. 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 It's like a negligible sh- slasher. It's in the genre. <laughs> we'll talk about it. New Year's Evil for New Year's Eve on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>